regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. Uh, if we could call to order at oh, <coughs> 6.32. Tonight we're going to meet with library trustees on uh, two fronts. The first front is the appointment of a vacancy that's filled midterm and or yeah, mid, mid appointment. And what happens is it requires a uh, joint meeting of the trustees and the Board of Selectmen. Nominations come forward and then uh, that candidate, applicant, uh, is appointed for the remainder of the current year and up for the next election cycle. So they come forward to the next election. Right after that, we're going to pile into the meat of the matter, and the, the trustees and director are going to present their budget request, uh, budget presentation. We've got a handful of selectmen's updates, uh, as well as uh, police uh, chief search committee charge, which uh, Sherry has worked on, as well as uh, job description for review. That's part of more of the hiring process. We hope to leave tonight with an officer in charge appointment, OIC appointment down <coughs> at the office. So our procedure tonight, you guys get to call to order if you're not already. Uh, of course, we're called to order and uh, we'll uh, at that point there begin um, the nomination process. So the, the chair, I, you know, I get to call for the nominations and you get to go, ah, boy, you know, sorry they couldn't make it, but candidate X. <laughs> and then they're in. Okay, um, question, any opening comments of the board? Okay, so that said, um, we're in a joint meeting right now, and the goal here is to fill a position of an elected official who's resigned. And uh, this is a library trustee, and uh, right now I'll be looking for uh, nominations uh, for that office. Richard? I'd like to nominate uh, Justine Rosewine in this position. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Are there any other nominations? Not hearing any other? Can we say make some comments? Uh, almost. Okay. <laughs> almost. I move the recommend, uh, move that the uh, nominations be closed. We have a motion to close the nomination. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, nominations are closed. We have one nomination and a second, and Richard wanted to comment. I said we'd like to make a couple of points about this. Uh, most of us know Justine. Oh, yeah. Uh, worked with her. We have worked with her for several years, right? So there's no question she's very knowledgeable and experienced in terms of how Sunderland is governed, having been part of that process herself or some time uh, being on finance committee and she's been on the committees for the school school committees and so on so uh, over the years uh, she's done her share of volunteering and doing her part for keeping some of what it is so i think we all support that uh, she has a background that complements the uh, trustees right now in terms of her background of education real estate family and so on so i think she's a good fit Someone that's committed and uh, knows very well uh, what her needs are and how it goes by. So I would like to endorse her for this position. Okay, well spoken. Any other comments before we go through the vote? If not, is this roll call? Roll call. Yeah, I thought it was a roll call. So this is going to be a roll call vote. We'll need a, a list of names and then the ayes will have it. So uh, this is going to be a roll call vote. Sure, if you want to be counting them? Sure. Uh, Why don't you have the uh, the library director call out our board? That's a great idea. Okay, so you get to say <laughs> all those in favor of Ben's by name, eyes or nays or abstains. Okay. You, can you call each person's name? Yeah. See, we by by the the law we have to do roll call vote. Sure. So they'll just get that way. Sherry can enter them and transcribe we're, it accordingly. Okay. Yeah. Beth Berry. Hi. Lauren Starr. Hi. Richard Lopaka? Aye. David Wissman? Aye. Joe Bergel? Aye. John Sackery? Aye. Very Thanks good. Well. <laughs> David Fierce? Aye. <laughs> Scott Bergeron? Aye. And Tom Feindeck? Aye. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe unanimous vote to uh, appoint, appoint Justine, <laughs> Justine Rose Warren uh, for the remainder of this year. And again, that is uh, as library. Uh, trustee that said and I thank Justine for volunteering as Richard pointed out she's she's uh, played instrumental roles in a variety of spaces in government over tenure here and it's it's a nice fit 
okay, Justine, come in and get sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> that, that said, we want to squeeze right into the budget presentation. We see some members of the Finance Committee have <coughs> braved the weather. They're <coughs> on their way here or have come here. So, um, right so I just want to start off and, um, by mentioning a few things that um, the library has been able to do with the current budget in um, 2015. We welcomed almost 50,000 people through our doors. Um, we held 319 programs, which is more programs than days were open in a year. Um, and those programs were attended by 4,900 people. Um, so even though we're a small library, we do a lot of really great things. Um, we serve more than just Sunderland. Um, we have a lot of patrons who come down from Conway, Greenfield, um, Turner's Falls, Deerfield, Montague. Um, people who come up from Amherst to visit our library. Um, and our patrons don't just rely on us for providing entertainment, but um, they rely on us for technology assistance, research assistance, um, job service assistance, um, and those are just a few of the things that we do. Um, so most importantly, I think we really provide a welcoming space for everyone in this community, um, and we're really excited to continue that. Um, so for this year's budget, um, we're requesting level funding in all categories. Um, the municipal appropriation requirements set forth by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners um, is um, um, one thousand, or sorry, one hundred thousand twenty-two dollars and three hundred five. Um, the proposed budget that the town will appropriate if you accept our, our proposal is one hundred twenty-three thousand and six dollars. Um, the municipal, um, or sorry, the uh, materials equipment. Um, material expenditure requirement <coughs> for FY16, also set forth by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, is $24,601. Um, we are asking for $24,885 in our library expense budget. Um, so what the library expense budget pays for is our membership in the CW Mars Consortium, um, and then it also um, goes for all of the materials, so it's the only two things we spend out of that. Um, so we actually require um, the Friends of the Sunderland Public Library put forth almost $8,000 each year to help us meet the um, materials expenditure requirement. Um, our CWMRs membership is slated to be $10,475 in FY17, um, though we're expecting to receive a Small Libraries and Networks grant, which will um, bring that number down to $7,775. Um, so meeting the uh, materials expenditure requirement enables us to um, receive the state aid grant, um, which we receive um, between $7,000 and $10,000 annually. It really depends on the state budget. Um, and since all of our library expenses budget um, goes towards CW March membership and loanable materials, um, state aid is what we use to purchase office supplies, um, book processing materials, anything else that we need. Computer, if we need someone to come in and fix our computers, that comes out of state aid. Um, so it's really important that, um, that we receive state aid each year. <laughs> um, and state funding um, for libraries in general is it actually going to be reduced by about 30% in FY17 is what um, the current budget is proposing. Um, and that's already down by 12% this year. Um, it's really concerning for the library, um, concerning for all libraries, but um, it means that we can expect um, a decrease in the annual state aid, um, so it's more likely going to be the 7,000, maybe even less next year, we don't really know. Um, and um, it could also mean an increase in the cost of our membership to CW Mars. Um, the $10,475, that's what they, um, they've already put forth, but say the budget gets slashed even more than that, we could have um, an extra fee on top of that. Um, that's what happened this year when the state budget was reduced by 12%. They gave us a bill for $380 more, which is significant if you're considering the overall cost of our budget. Um, so um, one of the things that the library is doing, um, we're hosting a legislative breakfast on um, Friday, March 18th at 7.30 a.m. Um, so this is an opportunity. We're going to have Senator Stan Rosenberg, um, Representative Steve Kulik, and a lot of the other local representatives attending. Um, and we're going to um, give it, have an opportunity to let them know how much libraries mean to us and how much the state funding really means to libraries. Um, I'd really like to invite the Board of Selectmen, all town um, representatives and officials. Um, we'd love to have you there. Um, and of course, Sunderland residents are also invited to that as well. Um, one you, just note. Sorry? Oh, okay. it is Friday, March 18th, 7.30 a.m. And the Blue Heron's going to be donating breakfast. It'll be great. At the library in our community room. Over here? Yep. Yeah. Gosh, we can lock them in here until they... <laughs> 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 um, 
Um, and just one note for the future, um, this doesn't affect this year's budget, but um, the staff salaries at the Sunderland Public Library are very low. Um, and it's something that I would really like to work towards increasing. Um, I know that in the past we've done a lot of work to, to raise those salaries some, but I think we're still well below um, regional averages and state averages for the same positions. Um, we're really fortunate to have a staff that's so dedicated, um, talented, and they're really invested in this library. I think it's really time that we start showing them some investment as well. Um, so we're going to make plans to speak with the personnel committee and just see what our options are for raising their salaries. So I, I just wanted to mention that for the future. Of years ago, we created a couple of positions and made a, a movement. And, and hearing Catherine is there's still opportunity for more movement. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Can you go through the three year rolling average formula for the state match, what it means to the expense line and the, the um, task the town has to match accordingly before we fall in or out of good stead with the state? Absolutely. Um, so that's the municipal appropriation requirement. How that's calculated each year is they take um, the total appropriation that the town gives to the library um, for the past three years, um, takes the average of that, and then multiplies it by 1.025%. And that's how you get um, the, the current year's municipal appropriation requirement. Um, so that's a really important um, figure for the state. They want to see that towns are investing in their libraries in order for the state to invest back in those communities. Oh, so as the state takes away <laughs> the town. Oh, I get how Yeah, I yeah. It. I don't, I don't oh, agree with it either. But it's a new, it a new, <laughs> I understand. Um, so it's, it's really important for us. Um, not only does this, you know, give us the state aid funding, but it also, um, allows us to be part of the Massachusetts library system. Um, that's where our interlibrary loan system comes from, which I think is the most popular thing we have. We can order books from the entire state and have them delivered to our library in a matter of days. Nice. Um, and if we lose um, state certification, um, that means that we are no longer eligible for that. And it also means that individual libraries can choose not to serve Sunderland patrons at all. So say our patrons went to Deerfield, they would say, no, I'm sorry, you are not a certified library town. <laughs> In, in that in, in that backdrop, what's the risk of a zero or a level funded budget year on year when the state's looking for an escalation of 1.025 over a three year average? Sure. Does that mean next year we get a three percent bump because we have to meet the state to match? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, so it's it's the averaging the past three years mm -hmm. total. Um, we were a little bit above um, for last year. This year we're still right on the border. <laughs> right on the border. Um, so there will be a slight increase for next year, um, but it's still, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's pretty small. Sure, sure. And again, I, I say that not as a setup, but as an information piece, yeah. because again, it's nice to see a zero year on year, and yet you have, your, that's against the backdrop of what's essentially a, a requirement for some escalation, some continued contribution uh, rise over a three-year average. Yeah, so the option for the town is you could appropriate us more than what we're asking yep. for, and that yep. would mean let you'd have to be a, a smaller increase for next year. Right. Um, but the increases, I mean, really maybe we're talking about a thousand dollar increase sure. for next year. Sure. Okay. Well, I appreciate you just spelling that out again. If you look at Catherine's explanation, you can see where we're going to be asking for the money yeah. because um, if the if the CW Mars keeps going up, right. that's just putting more pressure on the annual book fund. And I think it's a, you know, I think we've been trying to keep that at a reasonable amount and it's already, you know, we now have a goal of several thousand dollars higher than it was when we kind of took on, when the friends took on that um, fund mm -hmm. to try to offset, to try to help meet the materials requirement, which at one town, the town was able to totally fund. So you can see that there's, you know, right that there. gap is going to increase and we're going to tell you we need money for material. Makes perfect sense. Perfect. I appreciate the explanation. Questions of the board? It's hard to poke around a you know big zero in the budget. That said, it doesn't always elevate questions, but still take the opportunity to educate as we go through the process. Tom, questions? No, I I just interested that the state continues to and this is something we saw. We've seen in other things like uh, coin bills and mm -hmm. I, I want to say funding of education. Um, it's just education. interesting how we do that and where the money goes. Mm -hmm. 
No, you raise a really good point. But, 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 well, but it, it puts, it, 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 it starts pit, pitting, pitting uh, one department against another, <coughs> and just, to main, just to maintain, so. And, so. and categories of local government, too. Categories of impact, not necessarily departmental, but it seems like it, it goes across whether it's public safety withdrawal of funds or support of library withdrawal of funds or environmental withdrawal of funds, and it burden falls squarely on the on town meeting at that point. Right. Well, right, because the, the state is telling, the state is mandating that you do certain things, but at the same time, they don't, they don't, sometimes they don't give you the resources or help you with the resources to make those things happen. So, so I think the message though when we go to the legislative breakfast mm -hmm. is to say these carrots and sticks are great but they're dependent on the state maintaining their level of support. Right. Um, which is what we'll be saying. <laughs> but you know I mean I think if you all come mm -hmm. and can kind of reinforce that reinforce point. Reinforce that mm -hmm. you know this system only works when this when everyone's <coughs> Good point. Good point. Alex, Dan? Yes, yeah, so I have a few questions. The first one's a two parter. Um, does Sunderland Library still disproportionately serve out of town residents compared to other libraries in the area? And if so, do we get a break on our assessment from CWMRs for that? We do. Um, so there's something called um, net lenders and net borrowers. Um, so a net lender is someone who um, sends out more um, items through interlibrary loan, and a net borrower is someone who brings in more items from other libraries. Um, so I'm actually a net borrower, which um, it's, you know, the levels are pretty close. There's not much of an offset in that way where we're actually spending more, but we're net borrowers because we have a lot of patrons who are active library users. So they're um, borrowing a lot of stuff and a lot of really interesting stuff from um, a lot of the <coughs> academic libraries and such. Um, and um, we do serve, um, I think 56% of the people who borrow from the Sunderland Library are from other towns outside of Sunderland. Can we get a reimbursement? And we do. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, there is a slight offset. Um, it's mostly based on the net borrower and net lender kind of thing, um, but there is a small offset for patrons coming through the doors and actually using our library as opposed to their town's library. And then are we, we're no longer on the waiver from the state, right? No. Okay, awesome. And then the, that percentage is determined only from the expense line or do wages factor into it? It's just the, um, the. Everything we get from the town. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely everything we receive from oh. the town. Including, including the, the operating of the new library building? It's, so it's all four of those items? No. no it's, um, it's the three, the three from up there. Yeah, so it's expense, um, drug <coughs> salaries, staff salaries, and then okay. the um, building operations that's outside of it. Okay. So we're, FYI, probably the only town in Massachusetts that got to take building operations out of the formula, which we did to save the town money. But they don't really allow that. It was some consternation. We were pulling the budget apart, making categories, and then asked for that to be moved yeah. over. And they said okay because of increased, you know, moving to the new building. But right. other libraries haven't gotten the same. Just answer. include that. So that's perfect. They could use their annual appropriation required for an electrical electric <laughs> bill increase and say we got it, right? right? An expense. But. Ours is a purer definition. Yeah, but that would also drive up your material expenditure. Right. And right. That's, that's the match. That's where it's saving us a lot of money. Right. And that's again, just to reinforce that point, that's also where the, the friends have rolled in and the fundraising has rolled in, the private contribution has rolled in to, to um, reinforce that need. Nice. Good questions. You guys are good. We're talking about capital planning. If there's no questions, no further questions about operating. We get some HVAC system repairs. Yeah, so um, currently for this year, we're in um, plans to repair one of our um, our compressors because um, it has broken. And essentially, um, this one needs extra repairs. Um, it's the way it was constructed is right up against another sheet of metal. So it's just pumping the heat back into itself. That's why it, it needs to be replaced sure. soon. But we're not anticipating having that issue with any of our other compressors. Um, so the quote we've received um, is that we can replace the compressors for $3,500 um, mm -hmm. as they fail. So 
So far, we've only had that one compressor in the staff area, which has, has failed twice. We're repairing it this year. Um, this is just planning ahead, just in case. Sure. We have a lot of compressors right, throughout right. the library, and at a, you know the lab building's over 10 years old now, so at, at some point it's going to happen, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be an immediate need. So 10-year life cycle, hermetic compressors, yeah, you better put in one or two a year for some time. Yeah. Since <laughs> you have like 13 of them, right? I think it's so, so Catherine, when you were in... Um, when you were in college, did you study the uh, hermetic compressor course very? <laughs> I wish I had. It was, it was right it was right next to Dewey Decimal. Yeah, yeah, building maintenance is not one of those things they teach in library school, and I really wish they did. You think they should really? That Absolutely. Is that's interesting. Ex expand the <laughs> curriculum. Right? You're right. Yeah, because they teach preservation management about preserving the books and stuff, but nothing about preserving the actual buildings, right. and that's a big part of a so, director's job. So <laughs> well, look at what. Uh, Sharon Sherry's going through now, and mm. well, she a she went through this building project, but then now they're Jones. doing the same thing in in um, Amherst with the Jones. I would. That's very interesting. And I can just say, I wake up every morning thankful for having a brand new build or you know, ten year old building. It's just brand new in terms of libraries. Like we're very very lucky in this town to have such a well functioning, like well thought out <coughs> library. <laughs> Yeah, mirrors never think they need to know anything about garbage dumps, and librarians never need to know anything about hermetic compressors. So. <laughs> it was, uh, what did you say, garbage dumps and wastewater treatment. Mm -hmm. Never thought I'd need to know that as an elected official. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> okay. Can I just add one other thing? We are going to also have a housekeeping article mm -hmm. um, rel related to the building fund that we've been talking to Brian about, and when we get the language, we'll review that with you. So we're going to do something at uh, annual town meeting about a fund's definition or dissolving one and creating another? Yeah, he does okay. like that one. He, he says at the type of account it is, we've had it too long, and he wants us to call it some, create okay. something else so that we don't have problems. Easy enough. Not going to be adding or taking away any revenues or anything like that. It's no. simply accounting housekeeping. Yes. Great. Okay. Okay, any other questions, trustees? This is the, the friendliest group we're going to see the, this whole process. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, uh, Trustees. Justine, come in and get sworn in. And uh, Catherine, it's what, seven, eight months now? It's about. Almost, Almost six. Almost six. Almost. Yeah. All right. Please keep coming back to work. I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, everybody. Thank Have a great you. night. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, thank you. The capital piece, pretty straightforward. Uh, next up, we have uh, minutes of February first. I'm gonna put my one binder away. This is the, this is the two binder part of the year. So you got one binder that, and they're both white binders too. I'm gonna find a way to get a blue one. You get a green one, exactly. Green for money. I like that style shirt. That's good. Maybe we'll get you some red ones. That's <laughs> no, only black ones. That's all right. Motion for the February 1st minutes? Yeah, second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of February 1st. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Uh, a board updates. Uh, Tom, you want to start? Um, make those go away. Well, just, we're, we're supposed to try to get a uh, board of oversight for the ambulance together. We're trying to get it so that um, last week, we had a meeting, but we um, didn't have any, or the week before we had a meeting, but there was no, no representatives from Deerfield. Okay. So we're trying to get where uh, Deerfield was represented. Um, I think the budget is all set. Um, there, we have a, a few questions, but it's not, they're not major things. Um, we gotta figure out where we're gonna be next year. That's still up in the air. But I think for the most part we're all set. The uh, senior center, uh, Marlene is working out. The new director is working out very, very nice. Um, that's about it, Scott. Okay, David, you got anything? Um, I have a conference call on Wednesday in the morning with uh, Beth, our solar consultant, and Western Mass Electric, and all those fun folks. So hopefully we'll get a good update on where the whole project stands. I saw one, one set of email threads, David, where they're trying to bundle our two bundle our two projects, which were 
Yes. We were guided to get a, a bundled review. And now the bundle has been bundled? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, because, and we only agreed based on the fact that we would just be bundling our two projects together. And somehow they got bundled with something else. And okay. um, that was not what we agreed to at all in the process. So. And there's a, there's a the, the developer's fee associated with that as well. Correct. Yep. Okay. Well, that'll be interesting to see if, uh, uh, if the dynamic moves a little bit. Right. And especially if there's any delay based on that. Right. So... Great points. I appreciate that. Um, and then I don't, I'll, I don't want to steal any one of Sherry's items, but uh, we were both at the Complete Streets okay. class last week, so it was very good. I, I no longer look at crosswalks the same way again, <laughs> and signal lights, and you name it. That was a good meeting. Uh, it was. It yeah. was very good. I find yeah. myself looking at the bike lane widths, and mm -hmm. you know. But it was it was actually it was really good. And there's going to be another one. I think I don't think they've said one or yet. Two oh one. Yeah. Yeah, which will be a six hour. Class complete with field trips and all sorts of things. So nice. it was it was a very good, um, not as big a turnout because of the weather, but it was a, which in a way was good because you got a lot more interaction. Sure, but you it was got to really drill down on things. Yeah, exactly. But it was very good. Nice. Uh, instructor was very good. So interesting. Very useful. We've got some. We already started talking about some ideas. Yeah, about stuff, a policy. So. We scored a policy. Um, That's so right. It, yeah, it was it was a little a good exercise. meeting. That's yeah. great. A lot of fun. Uh, tomorrow at 4.30, there's a meeting with the uh, the school administration over at Sutherland Elementary about their... Um, Wednesday. Well, it was Tuesday at 4, I thought. I think it's Wednesday. 4.30. Wednesday at 4.30. So, yeah. Yep. Sorry. Wednesday at 4.30. Why did I think it was tomorrow? Slipping. Second thing to go. Um, it has to do with the pressure the school, the elementary school is under uh, and their uh, request this year. So I look forward to that conversation and we'll see how uh, Marty and Patty and uh, Ben uh, are doing and check in with the school. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, Sherry, you have any? Yeah. Want to add? A couple of things. Um, Swampfield Drive, George and I met with Teresa from the assessor's office, oh, looked good. at deeds. There are two deeds with restrictions that say that has to remain a private way. So Okay. Hmm. Those are our butter deeds? Yeah, butter deeds. I yeah. have them, um, too, if you'd like to take a look at them after. Okay. Um, and the other thing, we have a reserve fund request for $5,712, and that is for transportation for a Smith Volk student out of district tuition. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been going on since the fall, right? The right. Students started in the fall, and the transportation company now looking to be looking to be paid. Yep. Is it for the is it for the school year, or is this an incremental? September through January, fifty nine fifty okay. per day. Okay. Um, and so that's where we're at now. It's five thousand seven hundred and twelve dollars. I believe there's seventeen thousand dollars in the reserve fund. Okay. So that will require board approval and finance committee approval. Okay. Uh, the accountant signed off that the funds are available. He did. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is the is the form making it circulation yet? Usually, there's a reserve fund uh, transfer yeah, form. Yeah, it's downstairs. I did downstairs. see the email. Yeah. Okay. Tom or David, discussion about that. Something we, I know when it first started, it was it was on short notice. The uh, that's when we didn't have a, a town administrator, so I know the town clerk did a lot of calling around. And actually, got a very good price. So, for the transportation part of it, and it's an obligation that we have. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we have a, a transfer request for five thousand seven hundred twelve dollars. There's a motion to recommend. Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. We recommend to the finance committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else, Sherry? Uh, the 300th anniversary, I just wanted to give you an update. Um, as you know, we sent out a um, letter and an update with the census, mm -hmm. um, just informing people of what's going on to date. Um, we've received several back uh, people interested in serving on a committee or a subcommittee to help with um, preparations. And we've also received some donations um, and so I have inquiries now about next steps, if mm -hmm. the board's ready to formalize um, the committee by appointing it and creating a charge, is nice. that? You want to do that for our next meeting agenda? That would be great. And is there, if there a draft charge out there exists, we can grab it and, and use that as the straw man and build okay. off of that. Um, <coughs> senior tax work-off program, I've updated um, the policy to reflect uh, the new min state minimum wage rate of $10 per hour. Yeah. 
and the hours um, to 50 hours um, annually. Um, so that's down about five hours from last year. Mm -hmm. I also met with um, Teresa in the assessor's office and Susan to talk about changing the calendar on that so it would be a calendar year. It was September to October, which is a little awkward, and we all kind of agreed that to have it go from January to December with the credit being on the um, May um, actual tax bill um, would probably be a smoother. So that right. gives the that gives the applicant or the senior opportunity to work out the course of the year, year yeah. calculate, and then it's the spring. It goes on the actual bill. Okay. And there's consensus that seems to make sense. Yeah, it makes sense. So with that, that's reflected now in the change. Yeah. Great. We just need your approval. Okay. I see the salary piece, I see the, the rate piece, and I see now the under dates under a point seven. it's in there. Good points. Uh, is there a motion to uh, amend the policy as it's presented? Motion. Oh, excuse me, procedure as it's presented? Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And again, that's, that's, a, that's a nice piece about having the procedures and then, uh, and then frankly, catching the time for an update. Right. So thanks for that. I appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Next up, we got a uh, Chief of Police Search Committee charge. I'm sorry, Sherry, is that all? Yep, that's it. Okay. Chief of Police Search Committee charge in front of us. I think the last, we left it last time talking about a, a date specific. I have this here for April 15. So, guiding the search, the search process, they go and maybe read it. It's just one charge. Sure. This is the Town of Sunderland, charge of the Police Chief Search Committee. The Sunderland Board of Selectmen charges the Police Chief Search Committee with the responsibility of guiding the Chief's search process. This process should start no later than March 10, 2016, so that the committee can meet and organize. The committee shall complete the search and have their recommendation to the Board of Selectmen by April 15, 2016. The committee shall provide to the Selectmen a list of three to five unranked finalists from which the Selectmen shall interview and may hire for the Chief's position. Uh, number one, all committee members are expected to participate fully in the selection process. Number two, all search committee members are expected to abide with all applicable federal and state laws. And finally, number three, candidates' qualifications must be compared to the requirements and preferences of the vacancy announcement. And there's a little note there, applications due in the selectman's office by 12 p.m. March 9th, 2016. Tom? Sherry, do you feel qualified to uh, talk to the committee about questions that they can and cannot ask? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, could I recommend that to the board that Sherry yeah, that's would be a good present idea. at the first, at their first meeting mm -hmm. to discuss with them and that all of their questions be submitted to Sherry for review before yep. they, and, and again, it's a, <clears throat> well, in the past, when we first started, mm -hmm. um, it's, it, I think it's just a good process. Sure. So some people may not be as familiar right. with the process. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be nice if Sherry just could or a fresher and absolutely. Yep. The first good idea. first time first time we had town council come in. We had, yeah, yeah. And, and but I mean it was different. That was, no, I agree. It was 12, 14, 16 years ago. Correct. So we're get we're getting better and, and we're <laughs> much you know, we can't ask how many grandchildren do you have. Yeah. Right. Right. How old are you? Those kinds of things. Oh, exactly. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Good catch, though, Tom. Which, which have been asked. Mm -hmm. So, good point. Um, so, sure, you don't mind taking care of that Not with at respect all. to the initial sure. the mm -hmm. introduction, kickoff, uh, you know, boundaries, sure. types of questions. It's, it's well, well, well within uh, experience. <laughs> uh, with regard to the charge, are there any additions or deletions you guys want to add? The board wants to add. No, I think that looks good. If not, pretty straightforward. It's got the timelines oh. as well as the, f the basic framework. Okay. Uh, you want to adopt that ch charge? Is there a motion? Uh, motion to adopt Sorry. the charge for the committee. Motion's made and second to adopt the charge of the Police Chief Search Committee. Now, we've had some uh, interested parties send the names in electronically. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, again, uh, we're looking to uh, fill out uh, a screening committee. Five very low, nine very high as far as composition goes. That tends it can be a little nine. be a yeah. little bit unwieldy. You get above nine on a screening committee, just because That's of the, the the time, right? So yeah. somewhere you know, five to seven people would be wonderful. We look for that. 
So please, if you're interested, uh, call the office or email accordingly. And thanks uh, for those who have expressed, and we'll be reaching out. We'll reaching out at our next meeting to get these uh, get these names forward and through a full appointment. Okay. Uh, we have for review here the police chief and uh, job description. That's going to be for us to review over the course of the next week. And uh, we have a letter here from the chief. Um, and if, do we have qualifications for the job? We have a job description. The job description is different than qualifications. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Right on the back side. Let's see. Question. Let's see. Qualifications required at hire. Yep. And, and I would and I would I would say that qualification required at hire. Mm -hmm. That does not. That's not. I mean, nowhere does it say here that we were looking for someone with administrative experience. No, I agree. Yeah. That's that's a reason. I think Tom having this out for us for a review for a week to take a look at these makes a great deal of sense. We are right. We have the qualifications. These have gone through, um, gone through the last um, personnel committee review for the last hire, which means it's a little in the rears. And, and I think right. we should have. I think we should ha actually. I think we should have requirements and preferred as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a typical job application, and that. Right. But so I'd like to review that all. Yeah. Good points. Again, one of the reasons for bringing it forward for us ahead of the screening committee is. You know, are there things are there things to be added or deleted? Sometimes job description and qualifications can right. can go out of um, go out of a particular range. Okay, so that's our homework, and uh, we'll have to encourage the personnel committee as well to take a look at this uh, at at somewhere during the hiring process. To make sure it's still applicable. All right. Okay, so we have a, we had a piece of homework. We did the reserve transfer. We had a piece of homework that was around uh, the appointment of our officer in charge, and I guess that's going to have to be captured under business. Mm. <coughs> We have a recommendation from, and a letter of correspondence from uh, the chief of police with regard to uh, OICs. And uh, if I if I uh, could ask for a couple of minutes of adjournment, I'd appreciate that. All right? Come back in three minutes. Recess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just outside. Yeah. Thanks so much. Sorry, recess. You're right. Thank you for the, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Sherry a question. Uh, with respect to the OIC process, we have a correspondence here from uh, the chief of police and inside the correspondence, uh, I don't know, six, seven, eight pages worth mm. of correspondence. I did ask the chief uh, to uh, review and bring a recommendation forward for uh, officer in charge in as the chief's position is vacant. Discussion about the officer in charge's role. Uh, we've had officer in charge in the past. I think, as I recall, Chief Gilbert was an OIC at some point. And uh, in that process, essentially taking the the uh, in charge functions, and those functions include scheduling, apportionment, administrative components, communications officer, uh, and some of those are delegated throughout, currently delegated throughout uh, the department, in particular, landing on the shoulders of the sergeant. And uh, those sergeant's tasks are, again, scheduling paperwork, work with the police clerk, again, communication up to and the chief, and then the chief out to the community and the board of selectmen. Uh, with, that, with that said, is there a discussion about uh, the chief's correspondence? And if there's no discussion about the chief's correspondence, is there a recommendation to, is there a motion to appoint an OIC out of the existing patrolman? and or sergeant. At the present time, we've had a, uh, an officer, a sergeant who's been a sergeant for 12 years. He, uh, I, I would say over tw at 12 years, he um, probably, and, not, not, and, and, and again, this is the hard part when you have a small department. You have a small department, I think they have, the, most of them, most of our officers work very independently of one and by themselves, they're usually on shift by themselves, so they they're called to make a lot of decisions all the time. That being said, at the present time, we have a, an OIS, uh, we have a sergeant that's been second in command at the uh, 
<clears throat> at a police department for 12 years. Um, he continued to be um, be placed in those that position. Um, I don't think it reflects on on any or other officers when I say that uh, we should respect our sergeant stripes. And at this time, I'd like to mo make a motion. And again, it's the OYC. It's, right. it's not the right. chief's right. position. Exactly. Um, at this time, and I would, I would. I mean, in the past, the chief has worked with the, the sergeant. Um, this time, I can make a recommendation that the uh, Brendan Lyons be appointed. Um, be offered the position of OYC. I mean, he still would have to come in and and talk to uh, you know about changes in salary and that kind of stuff. The so, role, right? Framework the role. inside of framework inside of the uh, right. contract. Correct. Okay. David, any discussion? Um, no, I'll, I'll say. Okay, so we have a motion uh, made mm -hmm. and seconded uh, with respect to officer in charge duties, and then that is to extend or begin the dialogue with Sergeant Lyons about being the officer in charge down at the Sunderland Police uh, Department while the chief's space is vacant. Is there any other discussion? If not, yeah. I have a lot of confidence that Brendan will do a good job. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay. Next up, we are on for uh, February 10th, and I'm, I'm mistaken. For some reason, I had it in my head. It was Tuesday, but Wednesday, uh, mm -hmm. with, with a joint meeting with the Finance Committee and the uh, Sutherland Elementary School and Administration. Um, we're on uh, off of next week, February 15th, President's Day, and then back on again the 22nd. Now, is the 22nd a Monday? Since, yeah, it is a Monday. I'm, I'm, <laughs> right now, if... if, uh, if uh, the schools will be in on the 22nd okay. for their budget presentation. And if, if Janet's watching, yes, I was rubbing my forehead. It's true. She calls, she calls, she calls me out on an on occasion. So anyway, that, that said, um, we have a charge and a committee. I'm wondering, as uh, we get closer to five to seven uh, people interested, is there any reason for us to consider uh, posting a meeting as those names come in? Because, again, we have, we're off an extra week. This is a two-week gap now for a screening committee for the uh, chief of police. We have a charge to start in, uh, no later than March, and then mm. deliverables. Have the, have the ads been placed? That's a question, actually. We've the ads have not been placed. So, so we get time for the ads time. to go in. Okay, yep. good point. So we haven't we haven't started to receive any. I, I, I would hopefully I would send. I mean, I I think we have some very qualified people that have. Um, it was it, there was an interesting question by one of the the people that's interested, mm -hmm. and and I hope that individual has gotten an answer tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Why about the committee? Well, yep. it, it's it's interesting because it depends. You know, the dynamics of a search committee are different. It depends right. on who makes up the committee, how much work. For instance, um, we're going to get the all the resumes will become will come in. Um, Hopefully, as the resumes come in um, at that date that they're all in, the town administrator will package them all up and send them to the uh, will send them to the search committee members, which is a uh, um, executive session documents, which mm -hmm. so they though the information contained really can't be shared. Right. Um, and 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 <clears throat> they. We'll take the opportunity to review all the data so when they come they, they'll know at least there's 30 applicants maybe out of the 30 applicants there's 10 that you can, that don't have the minimum requirements and, and you can eliminate 10 then you talk about the 20 and then you can start discussing what's but if a search committee comes prepared you may ha may get done in a couple nights, mm -hmm. right? Um, Pair down as you go along. You right? may they may the search committee may want to hold interviews. 
you know, sometimes search committees will hold interviews. Mm -hmm. I would hope they would. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot you can tell from a piece of paper, but there's a lot you can tell from a one-on-one. -on -one. Talk to them, right? Good points. So I, I so I, I think the question that the person has is, how long is it, mm -hmm. and and did they have to be there for the complete process? And I would say, it it could be four, five, six meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to be within s probably six weeks, right. Right. Um, I would think. It was about six yeah. week window. Yeah, March to April, yeah. mid April. March. Yeah, um, but you're going to be one, you're there's an expectation that you are going to go to all of the meetings, right? Um, in that period, so March to April, then. Right. It's a short and duration. And so to, that, to, that, to that point, Tom, there's also a dynamic inside of the committee as well, screening committee. And, and that dynamic is, is a, it's important to participate in at all the levels. And look, we, we, we want people, members that have had experience in the profession. Uh, I don't, personally, I, I think you have to have that type, you have to have that experience represented on the committee. Um, I think at the same time, we want maybe, I would think you, you'd want a, a resident or two that has hopefully hasn't, hasn't had interaction, any interaction <laughs> with the police. Yep. Or yep. they may have an interaction with the police right. um, and they have an idea what they'd like to see in a, in a chief of police as well. Right. Those are all important. Be, and, and the more, you have to have a diverse amount of people. Mm -hmm. You have to have diverse profiles on a committee if you really want to understand who's in front of you. Yeah, so so I'm not saying so if you've never wore if you've never worn blue, um, that doesn't exclude you from the search committee. Yeah. Um, if if you um, haven't had a lot of dealings with the police, that doesn't exclude you. And if you have dealings with the police, that doesn't exclude you as well, in my opinion. Right. We want people of a, of a diverse background. Yeah, diverse background and experience. Absolutely. No, that makes a really good point, Tom. So we'll we'll continue uh, looking for members to work on the screening committee, and uh, we can get through this call of the job posting itself. We know it's a vacancy that starts in two weeks. Might as well post for it. We have a letter. Yeah, I believe they're going to be in this week's papers. Okay. So. And uh, from there, I was the reason I, I started this kind of down this path was to ensure that the February fifteenth town office being closed didn't create too large a gap for the board to get this started. What I'm hearing is probably not between the postings, right? More names coming in yeah, who are interested people, interested parties, then that would work well in the two week window. Correct. Okay. Good. Well, we want to get the ad out, and the, the, I'm sure. Sherry's going to talk to the uh, the police chief association. Has a newsletter. The, the central yeah. registry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the uh, exactly. Get the, the MMA thing has, yep. and we want to get we want to get public. We want to get in all of those. Yep. So, good point. Okay, well, I feel better already. Any other discussion? What's that, Mr. Chair? If there's no other discussion, is there a motion to adjourn? You you uh, almost. There's one thing you forgot to mention. Uh, this Wednesday, by the end of the day, this Wednesday is, I wrote it down too, right, right on the top of my page, right. is the end of the registration to vote in the primaries. It's really, really important that if you want to be registered, you want to ensure that when you come to participate to vote, that you're on the rolls. So please check in with the town clerk. And again, that window closes this Wednesday. And everybody, please check your voter rolls. Big election coming up. Okay. Now I'll make a motion. Perfect. I had arrows <laughs> on it and everything. So we have a motion made and seconded. I'm sorry, second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero for adjournment. We can call us out at 723. And again, please, Wednesday, end of day is your last chance to register. Okay. Yeah, all these check marks and arrows, and I forget the one thing that I wrote in the beginning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? It's always the way.